Today, it's all about Asia. It seems regulatory affairs in Asia are no yoke. More and more upcoming regulations in Asia defines today's regulatory agenda. For instance, in Taiwan. Today, I talk with Mark Renda of the Efton Chemical Corporation about his expectations on the upcoming changes in Taiwan. Mark, what has been Taiwan's driver for revamping its chemicals management program? For, for Taiwan and many countries, especially in Asia Pacific, primary driver by far is SICOM, the strategic international approach to chemicals management, and their 2020 goal, which, which in short is that by the year 2020, all chemicals will be produced and used safely. Uh, for Taiwan, what this means is a rather comprehensive approach. They're implementing GHS in a rather good structured way, uh, followed by an inventory after the inventory, which will be published uh, just next month. Um, they'll follow up with the new chemicals uh, scheme and existing chemical scheme. So very comprehensive approach for Taiwan, all of which is very, very ambitious. How would you rate Taiwan in their development of their chemicals management activities? Overall good. Uh, some of the good things that Taiwan has done is that Back in, I think it was 2006 or so when the ministries were considering this, in 2007 they established and uh, entrusted SATEC to um, review and look at what, what, the, what are the other countries doing. So they, they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. So they took the time for about a year or more to look at what's happening in Korea, Japan, um, and uh, Europe and other countries, and they wanted to see this first. So the, the good thing they do is they did some homework. Um, what, but, but, but when you look at it, some of the other aspects of it is, and you have to wonder, do they have the infrastructure, do they have the resources to, uh, to carry this all out in an appropriate manner? That, that will remain to be seen, we'll, we'll see. Um, and then there are other aspects that have been difficult to date, uh, one of which is uh, chemical uh, inventory um, 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 confidentiality um, uh, assertions. Uh, they've been difficult to make in Taiwan. They, they've improved as things have gone along and one just has to wonder if they'll get better uh, under the uh, new chemicals and existing schemes. Again, we'll see. A few weeks from now, uh, December 11th, uh, the notification of new chemicals starts. What is your expected schedule for the existing chemicals? For existing chemicals, Taiwan will have a phased-in approach. Uh, they'll have a pre-registration phase that will begin in September 2015 and it will end in March of 2016. After that, they're going to designate groups of chemicals, tiers of chemicals, uh, one at a time, uh, and, that, and do this every two years. So it will be a subset of substances substances they will determine designated, which will have to go through the full registration process uh, by, by industry. So this means some additional deadlines in the already overloaded regulatory agenda for Asia, which starts off next year, early next year, with K-REACH. Mark, what are the differences and the similarities between K-REACH, EU-REACH and the new Taiwan regulations? They have some similarities, they have some differences. Uh, one of the similarities is outcomes. Uh, in each of those schemes, uh, Korea, Taiwan, Europe, the outcomes for reviews will basically be a substance will be allowed, uh, it'll be restricted, um, it may be banned. Um, those outcomes will be the, will be, will be the same, uh, authorized. Um, also, the, another similarity is the, um, that each one has a pre-registration phase. Europe already had that. Uh, Korea and uh, Taiwan plan to do that as well. Um, in terms of differences, um, there are some significant differences. The biggest one by far is the scope. In, in Europe, it's virtually all chemical substances under one met ton, polymers excluded. Uh, for, for Taiwan and Korea, the, it would only be designated substances. Substances that they're going to look at volumes, they're going to look at hazards, and they're going to determine which substances they want to designate. So a much smaller scope of chemicals for Taiwan and Korea uh, than, 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 than for REACH. In that respect, uh, Taiwan's much closer to, uh, to K-REACH. The other one is polymers are out of scope for, for Europe, uh, except for monomer registration, but, but in Taiwan and in, in Korea, they're, they're in scope. And so that's the other difference. I think an important question for industry would be, 
uh, to know if they can reuse EU data in the new Taiwan legislation? Or is there some nice, interesting thing again, like the Chinese did with fish testing on Chinese fish only, maybe Taiwanese fish now, on the ecotox testing? Good question. Uh, for uh, Taiwan, they've uh, established what their data requirements will be very much uh, after what Europe uh, requires. And so the answer is, in concept, the, the uh, data from EU reach can be used. However, the real key will be what were the um, um, uh, agreements that companies signed in order to get data from other, other uh, companies to use their data. A lot of companies uh, signed up for, I can use this for EU reach, but not for other purposes. So they'll have to modify those agreements. Final question, what do you think would be the challenges for industry and Taiwan as all of this moves forward? For both resources is the answer. For industry, the resources for complying. For Taiwan, the resources for, for implementing. Um, one of the, well, a good example is Taiwan doesn't really have the expertise in QSAR to use that and, and, and against the endpoints, review it and say, does it apply? Um, that's one reason uh, they've made an interesting provision that for uh, any new chemicals up to December of 2015, they're going to allow that you just submit a SQR, a small quantity registration, and that'll be valid for two years, and then you'll have to follow up with the regular schedule according to volume. But that'll allow them time to, um, to um, gain their expertise. But, but right now it'll be resources and in infrastructure challenge for both. So that means there is some leverage, but overall it's quite an ambitious undertaking for both industry and Taiwan. Um, I guess we'll learn more about this uh, next year, about Taiwanese regulations and other Asian regulations that lay a burden on industry, one they have to carry with a polite smile as always, at our next event, ChemCon Asia. Mark, thank you very much for enhancing our knowledge on Taiwan and looking forward to continue our dialogue next year.